Good evening, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you happen to tune in. This is Brother Rob Wilson, the channel manager of The Love Agenda, where we talk about um, all things pertaining to the king, the kingdom, and the agenda of the kingdom, which is love. And in order to know what love is, we have to sometimes study what love is not. We have to we have to be discerning. We have to be wise. So we talk about being able to tell sheep from wolves, about being able to discern toxic personalities such as the narcissistic personality disorder, to be aware that there are such things as sociopaths and psychopaths and empaths. Um and if you're just tuning into this sh channel and we would like you to become part of the Kingdom Family Network, okay? We're just getting started, but we're hoping to grow. So if you would, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, uh, which is, this is not it. It'll be down below the video. And make sure you hit the bell so you can get reminders, okay? Um, and what we've been doing... We've been doing a lot of uh, some studies about um, how to discern whether you're getting false or genuine teaching. What are the marks of a genuine prophet? What what are the what are the things to um, resist falling into the trap of coming with your own message or or not having a heart for people, but having a heart for or not having a heart for God, having more of a heart for people than a heart for God. Um, we talk about um, what Christ looks like in real everyday situations in life. We've been doing a study on Monday nights called Man After God's Own Heart. While I'm posting it to YouTube tonight, I'm only recording it. I was waiting for my brother Mark Bixler to come on as part of the program so we could discuss this topic tonight. But we've been talking about... The man after God's own heart, the only person other than we know Christ was a man after God's own heart because he was the God man. But the only other person of whom this is said in the Bible is King David. Well, King David had a prede predecessor and his name was Saul. And he was kind of a, a ruthless individual at first and, at, and, and a perfect characteristic of a biblical narcissist okay he was envious he was jealous he was insecure he got his he got his regime his reign uh samuel notified him that his his kingdom was gonna his rule was gonna come to an end because he was not faithful to god he was afraid of people so once samuel notified saul it was going that way then samuel went and anointed David to be king. Now, something important to point out was, and I always try to point out, is you can have an anointing, you can have um, a purpose and a power and a plan God has for you, but we have studied over these weeks, um, uh, man after God's own heart, uh, that there was a get, there's a gap between the anointing and the appointing, and David. And when we study David's life, all through these trials and tribulations he went through with his family of origin, with his brothers on the battlefield before taking on Goliath, we get to see what happens in the gap. And I, I remember uh, t nearly 25 years ago when I first became a follower of Jesus Christ and I wanted to be doing certain things and preaching and teaching and evangelizing and street ministry. And I did, I volunteered. Um, but there was a gap between the day I first believed and went out with the zeal and the fire of Elijah and began to preach the word and the time I actually became ordained. And then there was another gap between the time that I was ordained and it was assistant pastor of a church and actually felt like God was calling me to do YouTube, outside the box ministry, street ministry, um, to encourage, to do what kingdom life is all about. So I'm at that stage in the game where the spirit of the Lord has led me. But if I had tried to do that, you know, 20, 20 years ago, um, yeah, no, I, I didn't have the inner weather to withstand <laughs> a lot of different stuff to 
handle the up ups and the down downs and the different things that happen in a very diverse ministry with a very diverse group of people. Amen. So, and I'm not done yet, but David, we're studying what happened in the gap. We're studying how when David came on the scene after he slayed Goliath, Saul at first loved David and put him right in charge of, you know, the armies and because he was a mighty warrior. But then as the people, uh, as, as David gained popularity, um, Saul began to hate David. And I got a, I got a glitch in my electrical. So I um, hope this holds up. I saw a blink. So anyway, um, Saul began to hate David. So we're going to get right into the scripture today. Saul has already tried to kill David three times. That's what's, that's what's scary about a narcissist. Um, and David can't figure it out because outwardly in his presence, Saul ain't acting like that. But there have been a couple of deliberate attempts that Saul has made to throw his spear at David and to pin David to a wall. On another occasion, he tried to ram him into a wall with his spear. But David is quick, little young fella, and he eluded Saul. And just the fact that he's such a fierce and young fighter, had David wanted to do something to Saul, he could have. But that wasn't what was in the heart of David. David wasn't like Saul. But Saul sees David as a threat, although he is completely loyal to him. You know, that's what a narcissist does. They see you as a threat. Even when all you are is a benefit, you, you are only um, have a beneficial um, disposition towards them. You only want to do well to them. But the problem with a narcissist is, and the problem with projection is, a narcissist cannot see you for you. A narcissist sees you through the lens of who they are. And Saul had been given over to an evil spirit. And that's what happens when the spirit of the Lord departs from a man or a woman, they are given over to fearful and anxious spirits. You don't have the source of security, stability, and peace you have. when There's nothing like the peace you have when you know you're, you're walking with the Lord and you're in good standing and right fellowship with him through Jesus Christ. And we have this ability to be in that position through Jesus Christ, not due to merit, not due to personal performance, not due to personal accolades but due to the finished work of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this ability to look at what happens in the narcissistic uh, conspiracy to assassinate the destiny of young David. But this also tells a tale of how the narcissist will plan and plot and scheme and be up to things behind our back and mean no good thing for us. Help us to realize that you have still called us to be, you said you've sent us out as sheep among wolves, therefore be as shrewd as serpents, but as innocent as doves. So help us to realize what was happening here, but Lord, help us to bring this into a relevant and today word and what is happening in the midst of our personal conflicts. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. So like I said, let's hop right into this, and we're at 1 Samuel chapter 20. We started at chapter 15, um, and if you want any more links to some of the other stuff, I can send them to you. They are not all on the Love Agenda channel. Boom, it's going to go right into it. Let me put my glasses on. And back in ver chapter 19, Saul had tried to kill David, but then David ran off to Samuel, and then... <laughs> Saul sent several groups of assassins to kill David while he was with Samuel, but they were prophesying and worshiping. And when they went to kill David, and this is the power of worship, this is the power of praise, this is the power of presence, they were overcome by the presence of the Lord and they began to prophesy. And three different groups, three different squadrons, Saul sends to kill David while he's with Samuel. And that took some... Because because Saul was uh, messed up, but he had some respect for Samuel. He should have known better. But then at the very end, Saul decides, I'll go kill him. I'll go kill David myself. And when he came into the presence of the Lord, he began to prophesy. And it says he disrobed 
and like uh, fell out in the Lord, like almost being slain in the spirit for like a day, you know, um, and it just goes to show you, and it says he prophesied as well, and it just goes to show you that you can have manifestations and you can have, um, you can have a word and you can have manifestations and that Saul got that, but that doesn't mean Saul was right with God. He had a supernatural experience, but he didn't have a life-saving, life-changing, heart-changing relationship with God. Hmm. Give that some consideration as you, because uh, there's a lot of people who want to chase supernatural experiences, and it doesn't necessarily, that's not the biggest qualifier for um, being a man after God's own heart. Jonathan is Saul's son. We're in verse, we're in chapter 20 now, and at the end of chapter 19, it says, uh, he, it says, Saul stripped off his clothes and he too prophesied before Samuel and lay naked all day and all night. Thus it is said, is Saul among the prophets? And it says here, then David fled from Naoth in Ramah and came and said, said before Jonathan, what have I done? What is my guilt? And what is my sin before your father? That he seeks my life. Now we've seen already that Saul used his daughters to to try to wed them off to David, but he wanted David to go out and slay, um, I believe it was a hundred Philistines, and bring their foreskins back. Yuck! But this was not uncommon in those days, and and so David said, Ah, okay, cool, because David didn't have money. David said, I'm poor. Who am I to marry the king's daughter? David was not thinking he was all that. He was happy to be, he sent, he spent so many, so much time um, doing things and, and being um, overlooked as he, as he was a shepherd boy in his family and the least in his family, that now David is getting his chance to work his gift. He's getting his chance to do his thing. He's getting his bite. He's getting his, he's got some bottled up stuff inside of him. Okay, amen. And now he's getting a chance to do it. He's not trying to take nothing over. Um, but it doesn't matter because Saul is so threatened. He knows he's going out. And we've seen uh, Saul. So so he, he tries, he, he tells him, you can have my daughter in marriage. Go go slay a hundred Philistines. Bring me their, four, four, uh, their foreskins. And David goes out and slays 200. So he is like an overachiever, which just made Saul, it said, more fearful of David. You have a king with all this power and all this authority, and you've got this man whose only position, you gave him his position. You gave him his status. Okay. You had the power to give it and you have the power to take it away. And if you had taken it away, he would have went back to, to nowhere. He wouldn't have made it happen. He wouldn't have rebelled against the king. And so we've already seen that Saul is so willing, just like any other narcissist, to use their family members as pawns in their schemes. So he goes to Jonathan, David does, because they're friends. Um, and what and what is my sin before your father that he seeks to take my life? And he said to him, far from it, you shall not die. Behold, my father does nothing, either great or small, without disclosing it to me. And why should my father hide this from me? It is not so. Jonathan and David are kindred spirits because they are both, although one came from the outcast of the least and like a shepherd boy, and one came from the palace, they are both the pawns of a family structure where they are utilized as tools and resources and not relational, okay? And, and why should my father hide this from me? It is not so. But David vowed again, saying, your father knows well that I have found favor in your eyes. And he thinks, do not let Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as see, so David is discerning. He's keeping it from you. He's not going to tell you what he wants to do because he knows we're cool. OK, and he's so he's discerning the sneakiness and the craftiness of his enemy, although David is not Saul's enemy, you have to be aware. Just because you're kind-hearted and considerate and, and and a man or woman after God's own heart doesn't mean that, that you don't have enemies. Now, it says love your enemies, 
and do no harm, to actually do good for those who spitefully use you. But it does not say we're not going to have enemies. And he, so he says, he's, he's going to say, lest he be grieved, but truly as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. You ever had anybody out to get you? I have. I still do. Then Jonathan said to David, whatever you say, I will do it for you. And David said to Jonathan, behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit at the king, uh, sit at the table with the king. So he, he says, there's a big banquet tomorrow, and I'm supposed to sit next to the king. I'm his right-hand man. Oh, that's a dangerous. But let me go that I may hide myself in the field till the third day at the evening. If your father misses me at all, and then says, David, earnest, David earnestly asked leave of me to run to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the clan. If he says, good, it will be well with your servant. But if he is angry, then you will know that harm is determined for, by him. You know, sometimes, uh, and I'm up here now, we're up here now, harm is determined by him. Therefore, deal kindly with your servant, for you have brought your servant into a covenant of the Lord with you. They've made like a buddy pledge to each other. Um, and, and, and Jonathan had actually given David his clothes, gave David his spear, gave David, David his bow and his sword. So Jonathan took off his royal garments. He humbled himself and gave them to David when he first came into service. Um, and they're... they're they're blood brothers. They're bosom buddies. They says they had a love one for another. But if there is guilt in me, kill me yourself. For why should you bring me to your father? You know, David was saying, if I've done something wrong, give me what I deserve. He, David, at this point, is taking full responsibility, and he's 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 taking accountability, even though he hasn't done anything. And Jonathan said, far be it from me. If I knew that it was determined by my father that harm should come to you, I would I not tell you? Then David said to Jonathan, Who will tell me if your father answers you roughly? And Jonathan said to David, Come, let us go out into the field. So they both went out into the field. And Jonathan said to David, The Lord, the God of Israel, be witness. Okay, make an oath. Now, you don't need to make an oath. You don't need to. Jesus said, just let your yes be yes and your no be no. Okay, when I have sounded out, sounded out my father about this time tomorrow or the third day, behold, if he is well disposed toward you, shall I not then send and disclose it to you? But should it please my father to do you harm, the Lord um, do so to Jonathan and more also if I do not disclose it to you and send you away that you may go into safe into safety. May the Lord be with you as he has, has been uh, with my father. Okay, so Jonathan is realizing that David is going to get the throne, but he's not he's trying to overthrow his father. If I am still alive, show me the steadfast love of the Lord that I may not die and do not cut off your steadfast love from my house forever when the Lord cuts off every one of the enemies of David from the face of the earth. You know, Jonathan, uh, you know, we should, we should know who's coming up, who's up and coming and who's going out the door. <laughs> and it doesn't mean we can't be as, like I said, be as clever as serpents, but as innocent as doves. So Jonathan is saying, you know, your enemies, David, I know God is with you and your enemies are going to be cut off, but don't do, don't do my, family no harm don't do my descendants any harm on account of my father and Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David saying may the Lord take vengeance on David's enemies you know so uh, Jonathan is rooting for the downfall of David's enemies yet Jonathan is a part of the family tree with Saul of David's enemies and we'll see it, it's sad that when Saul goes down Jonathan also goes down. Your own kinfolk, your own evil-hearted daddy takes you down. And some people have been taken down by their own ma mama, by their own daddy. You know, sometimes you, you, you know, I got to say it right, you, you weren't raised right. You know, some folks weren't raised right. 
Um, the apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> Some people's attitudes and disposition and heart. The Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, Jonathan's heart is right. <clears throat> but the tragedy and his downfall and demise is brought on by his close association with his father. Mm. He might have should have gone running off with David. You never know. He, it something Jonathan could have done. Um, so he showed loyalty to David. And Jesus said, Jesus said, anyone who loves mother, father, brother, sister, son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus more or less said, it's going to be me and me. And if somebody comes between you and me, you got to decide. That, that none of these people, none of these earthly allegiances are going to be a higher priority than me, okay? Jesus. So as we look at this, we see we see it that we see this seesaw of decision making here. Um, tomorrow is the new moon, you will be missed because your seat will be empty. And on the third day, go down quickly to the place where you hid yourself when this matter was in hand and remain beside the stone heap. And I will shoot three arrows to the side of it as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a boy saying, go find the arrows. And if I say to the boy, look, the arrows are on this side of you. Take them. Then you are to come. You are to come as for the Lord lives. It is safe for you. And there is no danger. In other words, he said, it's beside you that you're safe and there's no danger. Okay, so he's going to signal David through what he says to the boy. David's to be hiding. But if I say to the youth, look, the arrows are beyond you, then go for the Lord has sent you away. So if I send the boy on further, go further, go out more and get the arrows. That was a signal to David that he was to go. And as for the matter of which you, you and I have spoken, behold, the Lord is between you and me forever that's this is what keeps a covenant this is what keeps a covenant in friendship this is what keeps a covenant in marriage this is what keeps a covenant in ministry some people come and join you for what they have to get out of you and Saul wanted Saul had that plan of getting something out of David but when he saw all of all of the fact that God was with David and the blessing and the favor upon David David didn't want to, or Saul didn't want to get anything out of David anymore. He wanted to kill him. And it says here, um, praise God. It says here, yet Saul did not say, any, oh, so David hid himself in the field. And when the moon came, the king sat down to eat. The king sat on his seat as at other times on the seat by the wall. Jonathan sat opposite and Abner sat by Saul's side. But David's place was empty. Yet Saul did not say anything that day. For he thought something has happened to him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. In other words, unclean to take this meal. Ceremonially unclean. But on the second day, the day after the new moon, David's place was empty. And Saul said to Jonathan, his son, why has not the son of Jesse come to the meal either yesterday or today? And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. He said, let me go for our clan holds a sacrifice in the city and my brother has commanded me to be there. So now if I have found favor in thy eyes, let me go away and see my brothers. For this reason, he has not come to the king's table. Ah, uh, here we go. That Here we go. Here's, we, we flushed out. It worked. It flushes out the heart of Saul. Sometimes you can be clever enough to flush out of somebody what they really have in mind and in store for you. Amen. Um, then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan. And he said to him, you son of a perverse, rebellious woman. Okay. Do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own shame and to shame and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse lives on the earth, neither you nor your kingdom shall be established. Therefore, send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. So Saul had a plan to kill David at this feast, and now he's frustrated. And then Jonathan answered Saul, his father, 
Why should he be put to death? What has he done? But Saul hurled his spear at him to strike him. So Saul is so gripped by this evil spirit that he already threw the spear at David. He already tried to run David through with the spear on another occasion. Now he, he it says here to strike him. The NIB in King James Version, it says to kill him. You know, it says that he had in mind to kill his own son. The sac- this is the narcissistic Jezebelic because this narcissistic spirit is not the, just it's not a male female thing. This this illegitimate reigning king using illegitimate ways using ways of injustice, okay, has been overcome by the spirit, and the, the spirit of Jezebel is a spirit a religious spirit of child sacrifice. And he, he's already shown the willingness to exploit his own daughter and his own son. And David is now Saul's son-in-law. <sighs> he hurled a spear at him. So Jonathan knew that his father was determined to put David to death. And Jonathan rose from the table in fierce anger and ate no food the second day of the month. For he was grieved for David because his father had disgraced him. It's disgraceful when your parents are narcissists. It's disgraceful. You need to honor them. We're told to honor our father and mother, and we can't honor them. We can honor them sometimes by not being like them, and we can honor them by the fact that we love their posi- We love them for their position. We honor them for their position, but they may not have any type of character that we respect, but we still show so so and show respect for their position. In the morning, Jonathan went out to the field to the appointment with David and and with him was a little boy and he said to the boy run and find the arrows that I shoot as the boy ran he shot an arrow beyond him and when the boy came to the place of the arrow that Jonathan had shot Jonathan called out after the boy it is not the arrow beyond is not the arrow beyond you so he sent him further and Jonathan called after the boy hurry be quick do not stay so Jonathan's boy gathered up the arrows and came to his master but the boy knew nothing only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And uh, Jonathan gave his weapons to his boy and said to him, go and carry them to the city. So he uses the boy to signal David and then sends the boy off. And as soon as the boy had gone, David arose from beside the stone heap and fell on his face to the ground and bowed three times, showing honor to, to Jonathan. Um, and they kissed one another and wept with one another. Two men crying. Two tough brothers cry. These are two tough, strong brothers cry. David weeping the most. The man after God's own heart was not so heartless he couldn't weep. And and, and think about what, what, what are they weeping for? I think when betrayal is in the atmosphere and a narcissistic conspiracy out to get you and kill you, and I'm telling you, They exist in this world. They exist in workplaces. They exist in families. They exist in marriages. They exist in churches. There there are some spouses that are trying to kill the other spouse, if not physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. They're out to kill you. There's a conspiracy. They're out to dim your light and to take away from you who you are. And that's what this this weeping is is a brokenheartedness over what could have and actually should have been they he should have been able to to do and work his gift and show his loyalty to Saul the problem in the relationship beloved may not be you at all but yet you still feel heartbroken you still weep but it's not you rest assured it's not you it's the other parties um and when a marriage breaks up when a business breaks up when a ministry breaks up it's it's not always uh sometimes when plans fail it's not your fault you didn't make this happen you didn't make this person be this way they chose to be this way and it says here um david wept the most and um david weeping the most and jonathan said to david go in peace because We have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying the Lord shall be between me and you. We're not going to let this separate us. So a couple 
a couple spiritually led people, even even if you you don't have to be loyal to the flesh uh, instead of the spirit. Amen. We're to be more loyal to the spirit than to to the skin. Be be loyal to the spirit, not to the skin. And not be loyal to 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 our unrighteous. Um, just because you came from it, don't mean you have to be of it. That was Jonathan's case. Um, and then Jonathan said to David, go in peace because we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying the Lord shall be between me and you and between my offspring and your offspring forever. And he rose and departed and Jonathan went into the city. I'm going to end it right there. That's more than long enough. And it, 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 it's complicated. See how it's complicated? See how it gets complicated? See how a narcissist, narcissistic uh, assassination conspiracy gets complicated. And the implications of this, I'm going to give, I'm going to do a, what do they call it? Um, I'm going to give a, a teaser here. Uh, is Jonathan dies. On the same day his father Saul dies in a war. Okay. Um, so he's not guilty by association. But some people have experienced literal, physical fatality by association with a narcissist. Um, with bad company corrupts good character. And some people, if they weren't physically killed, you can be mentally killed spiritually killed emotionally killed your potential and your destiny and who you could have been you can give that away with the wrong associations all right this is brother rob wilson bringing the story from first samuel chapter 20 about the plot to kill david at the some people <laughs> and this is this is what it says you know david says thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Sometimes you go to dine. And sometimes you go. Not to the table. But the table re will reveal. Who your enemies are. Alright. Good night fellow. Not just survivors. But thrivers. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do not let their evil. Dim your light. Nor rob you of your destiny. Peace and love. Amen.